Good morning. I am Usman Haman. I am a Bororo, or sometimes they call us Fulani, from the northwest region of Cameroon. I work with Boskuda, the Bororo Social and Cultural Development Association of Cameroon. Boskuda is an NGO, or I would say, social cultural organization having an NGO component in the northwest region of Cameroon. Being social cultural, we covered almost the whole of Cameroon because we have Fulanis or Bororos all over the region. It helps in opening the eyes, enlarging the minds of the Boro people to accept, adopt, and go along with the development process of our 21st century. First of all, we, we were negligent. Our forefathers, our fathers were negligent of modernization, especially education. We concentrated only on cattle rearing, but as you look at, it is changing. Just over here, about a kilometer, is a town already. Before then, there were no towns. They used to call this place, there are some places, Black Bush and all that. Today, the bush is not there. It is either homes or farms. Example, as we look around here now, you see a garden. This garden is a garden of no other person but a Bororo bunk. 20 years back, you tell a Bororo man to go to farming, he will look strange. They will refuse. They know only cattle for food, they go and buy with the natives. But today, this young man, he is just about 35 years old, Saidu Umaru. We are in his compound. This farm is surrounded, first of all, protected by a fence, so that his cattle, which are behind the fence, cannot enter the farm. That's the first step. Now he has, I think, so many crops. If you look, you see the guava trees growing around. You see pear trees and banana trees. There are other ones which we call the foliary. Foliary, we use, they extract the, the leaves for soup. Then the flowers, um, they use it to produce local drinks. Then you have the pears. Over there you see Irish potato farm with beans, etc. So you see, this man is a modern Bororo farmer. Not only a grazer, but a grazer farmer. He has adopted to the whole system. Behind the fence, are his cattle. So he has the cattle. This is November. December, he has barely one month. Saido will be thinking of doing the same thing like all other Boro people, to move his cattle down to the valley, what we call transhumans. There is no other way, because the farms are all over. You look, the land is degraded, like over there, you see it is already dry, bare soil. So the cattle cannot be supported by what we see here. Why is this? The land is reducing. Reducing in the sense that the population is increasing. People need the land to farm, need the land to build. Saidu, where he is, some few years there were no houses there. He was just the son of his father. He has grown up, married, so he has to move out from his father's compound to establish his own home. With wife and children, and the children too will grow again to have their own. So that's how the land is reducing, not only in quantity, but now we talk about quality. People are difficult to change. That's why Boscuda comes in here. Boscuda tries now to change the mindset of the people, improve the land, have paddocks. You bring in new species like the Bracaria or the Guatemala, even in the dry season, your cattle will have what to eat and you will have the milk to drink. That's it. This system reduces the perennial uh, conflict that is taking place between farmers and graziers. Why? Because the cattle move looking for green pasture. 
now they go and encounter farmers too who are moving up also looking for fertile soil where they may sometimes where the cattle have been grazing you see so but if you have your secured space you develop it Lim you limit the number of cattle that have to be grazing there I think the problems of this farmer grazing conflict will be reduced it's difficult when we of Boscuda we tell people their cattle are many. They will say Boscuda is telling people to sell their cattle. No, Boscuda is not telling people to sell cattle. Boscuda is telling people to reduce the cattle so that you have quality cattle than quantity, which is a headache. Because quantity is a headache. You have 1,000 cows, they are all over five, seven divisions. When do you visit them? How do you monitor and know that they are doing well? But if you have few cattle in just one place, you have the quality. Quality in terms of meat, quality in terms of milk to sustain your family. That's what we are talking about. And I think that will give you money and you have more time to relax even with your family and do other businesses than to be running every day after cattle.